Hi, my name is Terry Youngman. I am the Park Planning and Development Manager for the Kent Parks Department, and I'm really happy to be here today to talk a little bit about Chestnut Ridge. We have a capital renovation project coming up where we're going to replace the playgrounds, we're going to be adding a new swing set, handling some ADA accessibility improvements inside the loop trail, and we'll also be adding some fitness equipment. All that being said, what we're really here to talk about today is art in the park, and with me is Scott Tremble. Hey Scott. Hey Terry. So one of the things we wanted to talk about is your approach to art uh, in public places and to talk a little bit about materiality, so talk to us about that. I like to tap into the community to get um, historical stories and personal stories of an area because I'm not from each particular opportunity, so I like to try and do my research. Um, I really try to make work that is inclusive, is interactive, and has sort of a just a really interesting appeal to all people of all walks of life. When I get all this information, I tend to put together ideas and concepts and then run them past the stakeholders and and basically synthesize this information into um, some kind of art idea. So that's a little bit about the design process. What kind of materials do you use in your artwork? What do they generally kind of look like? So you have to think of like the longevity of a piece in the public sphere for a really long time. So sometimes you might want to steer into the direction of like something that's painted in steel which can last a really long time. I constructed a piece for Seattle City Light about a year ago. Its aesthetic was referencing the fluidity of water and how City Light essentially harnesses that power and gives us the electricity. So here we're in a natural setting, right? It's a park. What would be a different approach to how you would approach materiality for a place like this? You know, when I think of parks, I try to use real wood in these contexts because there's a very, very natural feel. There's a very warm feel. It's accessible. It relates to the history of our region. It can look really cool in juxtaposition to the grass and the trees and whatnot. Yeah, and I think it's appropriate for a park setting to have that kind of natural material. I think what you said really made me think about form and function as it relates to artwork. And one of the things we're looking at is replacing old amenities in the park. You, know, you can see these old benches. It's not our standard. Can you talk a little bit about how your artwork can serve both form and function purpose in a, in a park or a public setting? Absolutely. I, I've been a big fan of artwork in the world that is interactive and is accessible to all walks of life and I think there's such an opportunity to create something that people can visually appreciate but also can physically interact with and I think parks are like a perfect place for that intersection. Yeah and I think that this bench is a good example of you know how we might look at something like that. An old bench that needs to be replaced is not our current standard but could serve an art aesthetic purpose and a functional utilitarian purpose of just allowing a person to sit and be in the park. So I think I think that's a great combination of a park environment and a, a, a art form that, that meets that functional purpose too. I think one of the character defining traits of Chestnut Ridge is these amazing territorial views out onto the valley. Uh, people come here, they stand at the top of the hill, we often see people sitting here at the bench. So I think that to talk a little bit how art may be in a few different places in the park and you can talk about some of the locations that we're thinking about and how you would approach that. Um, yeah, this is this is the biggest asset of this park for sure is the view and the last thing I want to do is create something that's going to block this view. So I think it's really appropriate to have something that is broken up maybe into smaller components. There's going to be a lot of space for people to move in and out and use the park itself and give a chance for people to sit on the benches and interact with the benches. I think it's really important to have pieces that kind of lead the park user along the pathways and I'm really interested in facilitating the view and facilitating people's experience at the park. Yeah and I think it takes something that is iconic about the park, the view, and it turns it into something that is more of a place, right? It becomes this place-making element that is, uh, it's the identity for this vantage point, for this view. And I think people will start to associate the artwork with the views because it is something that seems like it belongs in that landscape. It's not something obstructing or, or causing conflict with what is already so great about it, right? So in closing, let's talk about some next steps out here at Chestnut Ridge. We have our project, we talked about that, playground, fitness equipment, all that work. We'll you know, let the, the summer happen and people can come out and enjoy the park and enjoy the good weather and then uh, late in the summer we'll be under construction for a couple of months. 
And then at that same time, your process is going to be taking place. That's right. I'd like to ask the community to maybe give their personal uh, his histories of the region. And then I'll start to begin, you know, sketching and building models and whatnot. Then I start asking for feedback. And then after that, we would work together to make these installations happen in the park. Absolutely. Really looking forward to it.